Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here. This is going to be week number six of the PGP League War and we are up against the TBL, the Twitch Battle League. And I believe they are coming off of their very first win pretty recently. They are a pretty scary team regardless and we're just kind of going to be doing what we can here. Um, this was a very, very interesting matchup just in general. And I'll be completely honest, I really did want that Goldoa dragon matchup uh just based off of personalities because i am still reasonably bitter about him taking me out in the pcl uh after two gunk shot misses um from my greninja to a one of them was a roll to ko one of them was a sure thing to ko and i'm still uh decently bitter about that but regardless after i saw the pokemon matchup i really didn't want that matchup but it was fine we didn't get matched up with him either way and uh, he was actually the first battle to get done. So him and Meryl played and apparently there was some weirdness where it was about to go to timer and Goldoa just kind of forfeit uh, towards the end of the match. So that was a quick win for us and we go 1-0 and then matches uh, just keep coming in. I believe right after that uh, we had Visual Eye play Insanity and Visual Eye won that one. I don't know anything about that match but he takes a 4-0 win there and then we had Randy HLD who actually streamed his match. He um, streamed his match against uh, Colin and he won 4-0. I, I was there live watching that and Glade just kind of went in like a monster in, in late game. He orchestrated a lot really, really well in order to set up for the Glade to win in the end game. And then this was all in one day. I believe this was all Thursday, I want to say, of that week. And so I had my match a little bit later in the day and... If I had won this, we would have clinched out all four matches. We would have gone 4-0 clinch in a single day. So I really wanted this win. I really wanted to play this one out for my team, get the clinch, and then have the rest of the matches not even really matter all that much. Here, we just have my matchup against Hef Nasty. And you can see how scary of a matchup this is. So the Toxapex is super duper scary. Uh, as well as the Gallade, I really want to manage the Gallade as best as possible. Uh, my goal is to not lose to the Gallade specifically, but also um, the Landorus is super duper scary. I really want to just um, manage those threats as best as I can, and then hopefully the rest will fall into place. I feel like I have the checks for everything else, but you can, guys can see that um, I just go for my, you know, safety blanket lead of the Infernape. He leads off the Landorus. Um, I believe he told me after the match that he was concerned about me wanting to do a webs lead here and he wanted to be able to try and bop my Arachnid super duper early in order to try and um, ma manage the speed control on this team. But uh, I'm just going to lead off with my Infernape here and it feels like a U-turn is free. I would imagine that I go for a U-turn here, but um yeah, I don't even remember if this thing is scarfed. I feel like it isn't. Maybe it just um, made a super bold prediction to try to uh, predicting this thing to be not scarfed, but it does allow me to go straight into my Arachnid. Or maybe I just expected him to U-turn. Maybe he does. In fact, U-turn. No, he just goes for Earthquake here. And here, my biggest concern was that... Um, so, okay, I knew that Arachnid was going to be the best switch into an Earthquake, but um, it did cross my mind that this thing could just be Z-move, and it could uh, try to... Hit BD super duper hard here, so I go into my Jolteon because um, Jolteon was really the only thing that I could do to kind of manage this thing. Or no, if anything, so, okay, I felt like um, Z-Move was, was was reasonably likely and I felt like Stealth Rocks was reasonably likely. Maybe maybe in a to maybe even a Toxic, I wasn't too too sure, but um, again, this is going to be another situation, right? So, because I believe I'm Quick Feet, I'm almost positive that I'm Quick Feet Jolteon. Because I'm Quick Feet Jolteon, uh, that means that I kind of built my Jolteon in a very particular way. I do have the 159 HP because that is the most HP that I can have while still only taking 9 HP um, from burn each turn. If I had any more HP, then I'd be taking 10 points of HP each turn. And uh, everything else was just in, in into random bulk, but I probably had enough defense to be able to take that comfortably. Uh, I do try to Volt Switch. He goes straight into this thing, which was... Um, not the best. I don't know. It was it was a weird switch. I didn't think he would play the, it that um, aggressively, but I'm going to assume this is a hidden power ground that he goes for as, as I go into my Necrozma. And my Necrozma is really, really specially defensive here. I did not have a ton of special bulk, and I really didn't want to lose to something like a Diancie that can uh, trick room up and deal massive damage to me. Um, I didn't want to lose to certain just like special threats that, that I wouldn't otherwise have solid answers for, or even just like sack off mons, because uh, last 
week really showed me how, you know, especially weak I can be. So I really wanted to build, especially defensive Necrozma, that could kind of deal with it. Although, I, because this Jolteon is is a more bulky Jolteon to be, to be able to take on, um, to be able to take on uh, my own Jolteon. He has a Toxic, and he's able to Toxic me before I get my sub set up. And then it, it also allows him to go into the Diancy. I am able to get an Earth Power off, but it, you can see here, it's just not doing enough damage. And I think he knew that my Necrozma was a potential threat. Sorry about that, my uh, cable got bombed. But yeah, again, you can see that the Earth Power just doesn't do enough damage here. And I'm on a timer, which really does suck. But I think that I'm able to manage this reasonably well. I at least want to be able to take out this Diancy because honestly, Necrozma isn't going to do a whole, a whole heck of a lot. It, at the best, it can take hits from a Jolteon, but um, seeing that it's bulkier and seeing that it's more geared towards taking out my own Jolteon, I think that I can kind of manage that decently well, but uh, I'm just going to get off a of Toxic just to kind of accelerate things, just because, and uh, I think, um, just to counteract leftovers and to kind of accelerate a little bit this whole, um, uh, being, being able to take this thing out, but he goes for Stealth Rocks and it was unfortunate. I had really no way of preventing those from, go from going up. It's going to be something that I'm going to just kind of have to deal with and from here, I can just uh, try and take this thing out, even though, man, just seeing how much damage I'm taking from those from that Toxic, because it's really starting to rack up at this point. I thought, yeah, okay, so here I thought maybe he would want to switch out, maybe go into Landers or something. This was just a guard against that. The difference in damage is there, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And uh, he has Diamond Storm, it looks like, to kind of counteract any kind of Calm Mindset that I would have brought, but uh, this just didn't feel like the matchup for it, so... It's honestly going to allow me to, and he gets a defense right, but um, it's going to allow me to wear this thing down, and it's becoming clearer and clearer that I'm going to have to give him the charisma just to deal with this thing, which, uh, man, it really does suck like because it does kind of open the door for his own Jolteon. I'm going to have to maintain checks to his Jolteon, and uh, it's going to be a back and forth that uh, I don't feel the best about here, but regardless... I'm gonna switch out. I think maybe just for fodder, or maybe just take one hit from it, from the Jolteon in this end game. But um, oh, also I felt reasonably confident that that he wouldn't make a super duper aggressive in power fire play or anything like that. But he ends up going for the Endeavor, and that's going to leave me at not the best HP, which is going to be important for the rest of the match. But um, man, I don't know. I guess Endeavor would have been. I should have just stayed in with, with Necrozma, to be honest, but uh, I'm able to leave late. I'm, I'm able to get myself 2 plus 1, which is not going to matter because he's always going to be able to bring in his Landorus, and uh, it's probably going to be able to turn and leave me kind of uh, in a bad spot, but yeah, just the fact that Endeavor ended up doing that much damage to me, I thought I was going to be able to switch into a Diamond Storm. I thought maybe if he was super duper bold, he would uh, try to predict and go for a uh, Hidden Power Fire, but he never had the Hidden Power Fire, so... Endeavor was kind of his play to deal with anything that, that I don't want to switch in. Although, I don't know. I, it was just a bad predict on my part. But regardless, this is going to allow me to bring in my uh, Grand Bowl. And it's going to allow me to take a, a few hits and but to, to be able to super hang for free. And I do have to keep this thing reasonably healthy in order to kind of deal with um, the Glade. Or at least take one switch in from, from the Glade and get an Intimidate off. But uh, in this moment, I'm my thinking to myself is that, look. I'm going to be able to, um, this thing is probably going to gonna switch out or U-turn, and that's going to allow me to kind of keep this thing as healthy as I can and switch out later. I'm going to Super Fang as the Toxapex comes in because uh, the Toxapex was his most obvious switch in. Um, and I just tried to stay in and go for more Super Fangs. I guess at this point, I felt like I had answers to Glade or, or, or I felt like I could manage it in, in other ways, but uh, I felt like dealing with this Toxapex was more important in this moment. And so I just keep flicking Super Fang into this thing. And well, no, if anything, I thought he might want to pull pull a double switch in order to get the HP, get most of the HP back through through Regenerator. But I'm at the point where I really kind of need to uh, protect against him trying to toxic me, so that again, uh, Grand Bull can do one single thing against this um, Glade here. But he ends up going into the Scizor as well, and uh, it's going to be another situation where Bandit Scizor really does a whole lot to my team. But I'm going to force him to at least take some damage, kind of force him to um, either Bullet Punch me and lock himself into something like Bullet Punch, or go for U-Turn and take a little bit of damage. Regardless, oh boy, alright, yeah, no, this is 41 turns. But regardless, um, I think this is going to put me in an okay position, but uh, he goes directly into, into the Glade, and I can kind of choose what I want to go into. I go into, into the Gramble. I think it's going to be the best play overall, 
and I am still just barely healthy enough to take most of this that this thing would want to go for. I think um, I'm barely out of range of a poison jab, say, but uh, it is going to allow him to go into his Toxapex, and uh, this is going to be a little bit of a theme, but I can super fang this thing, and just to protect against um, some other things that this thing can do, and just the Rocky Helmet is so racking up at this point, and it's really freaking frustrating at this point, but uh, I can go for some more super fangs. I can give this thing up to weakening this tox specs, which honestly might not even be a, a, a great play because he can uh, recover up a lot and he can uh, switch out and get the regenerator. So who knows what I'm doing at this point? But I just feel like if he is inclined to stay in, if, he, if he's inclined to want to take out my Grand Bull, then he's going to have to keep himself reasonably low through super fang or he's going to have to just kind of deal with um, something switching out and taking super fangs, but this is the play where I switch out my move, I go for an earthquake, and, uh, I miss out on, on a little bit of damage, I guess it's not the biggest deal in the world, but, I thought, uh, he would kind of go for, make some different plays, I don't know, I don't know, regardless, it's gonna allow me to go into, um, Infernape, and I believe I'm gonna mix Infernape this time around, and Bullet Punch is going to be able to, do a lot of damage to me. I think I might be a negative defense nature, maybe. Uh, I don't exactly remember, but regardless, it's going to give him some opportunity to kind of switch around me. And you can just see that I'm taking a lot of damage between just uh, rocks and bullet punch chip, and now Rocky Helmet as well. It's just not a great situation for me at all. But uh, it will allow me to bring in my Arachnid for free. And now I'm kind of thinking, like, look, I invested a lot of speed into this Arachnid. Or no, maybe this is probably the wrong Arachnid that I'm thinking of. But regardless, I built this Arachnid to kind of be able to take on some of his threads. But I did build it to not get toxic ever by this Toxic X, right? Um, my only attack is Liquidation, which is going to do nothing to this Toxic X. And it's going to do less to me and it's probably going to do more to me through the rocky helmet chip than i would be doing to him with the attack so i just felt like getting up webs here being behind a sub would be kind of optimal for me but i didn't want to switch anything else in because i could get toxic scalded anything and, ro and just rock chip i didn't want anything else to take chip and i wanted to keep this thing reasonably healthy and then i'd started to run some calc oh i also have toxic right so i guess i'm i guess i'm toxic sub Toxic sub, liquidation, sticky web. That's probably right. But I started running some calcs, right? And a no investment toxic packs is going to take around five, maybe six hits to KO a, a, a sub. So I can net myself some HP by continually subbing up on this thing. And I can end this interaction decently okay. So from here, um... I just, okay, I actually thought he was going to break my sub on that last call, but he ended up not doing it, so, oh, also, I, uh, I forgot that I'm faster, so that was just a mental misplay on my part, but this match was long, and I was kind of losing it at this point by just all of this nonsense going on, regardless, uh, I think one more scald would have allowed him to break my sub this time, which I thought that was going to be his play, I thought he was going to just keep attacking to break my sub, and then he can bring in his, his landers, get the intimidate off, to ensure him to be able to take a liquidation but that's not what he did he he gave up on trying to break my sub it goes in the landers and doesn't intimidate me which frightened me for a bit and and it honestly made me want to go for the sub i thought if anything he was going to in, going into landers to try to u-turn break the sub and then bring the landers back in so that um so that he can click fly but now he's forced to click fly because he told me after, uh, after the match that z fly was his only answer to uh to my arachnid and I'm able to sub up again, which is going to leave me in an awkward spot because he's always going to be up. He's always going to be up in the air, and I'm going to always be able to sub on the turn that he goes up in the air. So, um, I, I think I misplayed one one turn where I subbed when I thought he was going to tag me, but he ended up just going up in the air. But regardless, uh, I I'm I'm kind of net losing a little bit of HP by by aggressively uh, subbing on any kind of fly play that he does try to make. So. I feel like I just have to attack here, but I might try to get behind a sub. Or no, I just covered Liquidation. Um, be again, because he didn't intimidate me, Liquidation should KO here, and it does. Uh, if he had, if he had intimidated me, then he would have been able to take a hit. I'm almost positive, and uh, that would have put me in a worse spot. But now he's going to go into the Scissor, I believe. 
And he told me after the match that he actually forgot about uh, the secret webs being up because I was in on Toxic Pact, a lot of turns happened, then he goes into in, in, into Landers, doesn't get affected by Sticky Webs, a lot of turns happen, and then uh, he goes into this thing and he forgets that the Sticky Webs are up. Which would have meant that... Which would have meant that my Araquanid... I thought... I, I th honestly thought that he had some kind of crazy tech for me, so I got afraid and I switched out into, into the Grand Bull to sack off the Grand Bull, and it turns out that... Uh... He just forgot, so he has to double switch, because he knew that if I just clicked Liquidation, uh, I would have been able to KO the Scizor, and that would have put him in a worse spot, because uh, he needed Scizor around for uh, a few things in the later end of the match. I got too scared. I fixed out and went out into Scramble, and just clicking Liquidation would have been the better play here. But now the Glade can come in. The Glade's under webs, and uh, I'm able to bring in the Infernape. Now here... I don't feel great about it. Um, also, my, my, my Grand Bull was brought in meant as a sack from the, in the first place. I didn't mind it going down. But here, I'm just trying to get as much damage off because I don't think anything I do on my on the rest of my team can just straight up Oko. But I, if I play this correctly, I can kind of set up... Um, uh, what is the thing? Uh, Cartana in the late game. And honestly, I just go for the Earth Fleet because I thought it would protect me against... And potentially wanted to go out into, into the Toxapex because it does resist both of my stabs, and I felt like this was uh, going to be my best play here. But uh, now this is going to allow my Cartana to come in. This thing is under webs. It probably would have been better for me to not be scarfed and to be able to switch up moves and just rely on webs, but I didn't rely on webs. So from here, I am forced to just kind of go for Leaf Blade. Now, an interesting thought here is that if, 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 if I had clicked Knock Off and, um, oh, okay, so this is a really important aspect to this endgame as well. So he clicks Toxic because he expects me to want to go out into my Arachnid, and again, my Arachnid can 1v1 this Toxapax, but what my Arachnid can't do is 1v1 the Toxapax plus, um, Plus Jolteon. So it puts me in an awkward spot where I felt like my best play was to just keep attacking. Now, again, if I'd gone for the knockoff, then uh, maybe that would have helped me against the. It, it would have gotten rid of the Rocky Helmet, and then that would have maybe put me, put me in a position where I could start to do a little bit of something. But regardless, at this point, there was, there was a lot going on. Like, there's more going on that I probably have time to talk about, but. Uh, he went for Toxic repeatedly because, man, if I'd just been able to get my Raccoon behind a sub, then I would have gotten been able to KO either the Gallade or the or the Jolteon, and it would have put my own Jolteon in a position to win. Okay, and I go for the Thunderbolt on this turn. I won that. I genuinely, like genuinely, 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 100% forgot that the that his own Jolteon was in the back. When I was making these plays, I 100% believed in my heart, in my brain, that, um that the Jolteon was not there and that all I had to do was beat the Toxapex and the Gallade and Thunderbolting into the Gallade would have allowed me to KO it and then another Thunderbolt into the Toxapex would have won me the match, the match would have been over. I genuinely 1000% forgot that the Jolteon was there and again it just goes down to playing a really long match, um, having a lot of turns to play out and um, there were a lot of really stressful high IQ plays because um, I had to play my Arachnid to be able to 1v1 the Toxapex, and I had to maintain my 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 Arachnid as a check to the Toxapex. A lot was happening here. Now, uh, he's in a position where he's just going to be able to attack into my Arachnid, and um, that's ultimately going to be the match. Now, another note, another note, actually, is that he missed a Zen Headbutt, right? Which was super unfortunate. He said that Knockoff did it, so he had no reason not to just click Knockoff there. But if I had gotten up a sub, he missed two Zen headbutts in a row, and that liquidation uh, roll had KO'd the, the Gallade, then I actually potentially win. Well, the Jolteon can Volt Switch. Yeah, the, the Jolteon being able to Volt Switch uh, always kind of just hex me up there, unless I'd gone for the sub on the Volt Switch, in which case, uh, yeah, maybe then, I don't know, anything could have happened. Regardless, uh, that was our fourth match of the week, so... Uh, I really wanted to come through and clinch it for our team on that, again, single day, but it wasn't meant to be. Our last few matches, I know the Killer Nacho was slated to play, so was Super Salamence and Vivid. So those were our final three matches that were slated to play. 
And um, the next match to be played was Vivid against Playmaker, and uh, Vivid just beat him straight out 5-0. Uh, I helped him out with the build a little bit, um, helped him out with uh, some thoughts on the match, and he just absolutely murdered it. I know uh, Randy HLD suggested to him a Cotton Guard, Dragon Dancing, a uh, Mega Altaria, and that just, I think, got almost all the Geos. Um, and then after that, uh, Super Salamence and the Kill Nacho took pretty strong losses. But regardless, uh, that Vivid win clinched out the entire week, and we were able to win the week from there. So that's going to put the, the PDBL at 4-2. and two. And it's going to keep us in the top four, but next week is going to be a must-win week because BBL is right on our heels. And if BBL wins, then we potentially lose our fourth slot. So we have to play it out against the APA as strongly as we can, even though uh, they have a tough team and we have a lot of top matchups. But I feel good about where, we, where we're at. Like I said, it's just going to have to be how this goes. We're going to be fighting for our playoff spot in this final week. And I think that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with uh, the final week of the PGP League War coming next week, uh, as well as more weeks of the EPA Academy and uh, the ICB play I see the A playoffs coming really, really soon. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.